We are in the process of converting an RV park to a small tiny home resort. But before we can do that, we need to remove the existing units, seven of them, and we've got a super short time window to do that. So I brought my two guys from Oregon, Johnny and Chris, and as you're about to see, it's turned into quite an adventure where things went from being overly ambitious to stupid pretty quickly. We bought this property about four months ago, and we knew we weren't gonna keep the existing mobile homes. We looked at several options from offering them to our tenants to moving them away, but unfortunately, the majority of them were too old to legally be moved since they no longer met code requirements. Our tenants didn't have any desire to want them either since the previous landlord had done nothing on them in the last 40 years. Since we'd never been inside them until after we had worked with all our tenants to successfully relocate them and just financially help them in participating and helping them move, it was the first time that we walked through them for the first time and it was truly apparent that these had been neglected over years and years and we really wanted nothing to do with them. So with that being said, we explored our options for removal. The option we'd really wanted to do was a burn and learn. Um, for those of you that don't know what a burn and learn is, it's where the fire department comes out and burns them in a controlled environment and it helps teach the guys at the fire department ongoing firefighting education. Uh, unfortunately, the proximity of our lot to neighbors and the amount of trees we have on the lot didn't make that feasible either. So with that, our only choice was left was to demolish them and send them away in dumpsters. Now in our work and our experience, we always try to get quotes from contractors and then we try to decide whether or not we think it's feasible to do it ourselves or just have a contractor come. We had two different contractors come out and they quoted us between seven dollars and $10,000 a unit to destroy and have them removed. The the biggest price obstacle was the amount for the trash and to have a trash company come and haul them away since we're in a rural area. Uh, none of the companies we called could even do it before the end of the year, so that was out of the question. So between that and the cost of fifty dollars to 80000 just seemed too high for us not to try to do it on our own. So with that information, we made the call to bring our two guys in from Oregon, Johnny and Chris, that are part of our team up there in Oregon to see if we could get this done and get it done before winter. I watched some YouTube videos, talked to a few people that said I was probably being stupid and contemplated what really could go wrong and rented a 30,000 pound excavator and a front loading skid steer from United Rental. The total on that was about 4,500 for seven days. So I felt like we were already way ahead and that we were actually gonna save maybe a bunch of money. So off we went. Day one, I took off. I went to Home Depot to get tools for what I knew we needed while the boys waited for the equipment. Uh, the equipment came while I was out and they went straight to work. However, in their excitement, they forgot to mark the water and sewer lines. So they created an extra two hour job by having to dig it back out, but whatever, they were having fun. Neighbors came by, they thanked us for cleaning up the park. We even had the sheriff come by and told us we were good to burn debris and just call it in on the dispatch line. And we got two units down on day one and felt pretty good about ourselves right until our first obstacle came up. We got a random call from a gentleman at the Idaho Environmental Protection Agency who told me that someone had called in that I was burning debris and that it was a state rule that I was violating. So we had to stop everything we were doing, we had to put out the fires, and then he came out two hours later to inspect our work. I'm ready, I'm Tim by the way. Dave left. We, we had you're, this you're fire here, and we, put, out. we had one over here that we put out. It's a state rule, it's not a not a state law, which okay. there's a difference. Yeah. If it was a state law, the sheriff's department would be expected to act on it. Right. It's not a state law, it's a rule, so only my agency can act on our rules. We were polite, he was nice, but it was like our first real setback time-wise and not even getting one dumpster a day, there was no way we were gonna keep up with our demo debris and especially if we couldn't burn any of the leftover wood products. Our biggest problem is we got a dumpster that got filled in about 30 seconds and we need to get a new dumpster immediately and they're supposed to bring one every day and we have yet to get one for today. So that is our biggest problem, logistical challenge as there is always one when you're doing shit like this. So we decided to just keep on dumbling. On day two, we worked on units three, four, and five and we got three down in one day. But these guys have done a great job. So in about an eight hour span, these guys have knocked out three of these. So we've got one, two down right here. And then we're going to head over here and we're going to show you what building three going down looks like. The major obstacle for that day was when I called the trash company to bring me a new one. They said they couldn't bring me one for another two days. So that was a huge issue and it put us way behind the eight ball. And I honestly realized there was no way we were going to be in our seven day timeline. But I didn't really grasp how much of an issue it was going to be because beyond that, things were actually going pretty well. Day three, we leveled units six and seven. Felt pretty accomplished. Now we had every unit down met the seven days but when i started looking at all the wreckage it was pretty apparent i mean it was like we had leveled a small town the amount of trash debris it was literally overwhelming we had the second dumpster come and it was loaded up and the guy came and he says dude there's no way you're 80,000 pounds based on my psi my max load is 54,000 pounds so we had to literally pull 30,000 pounds out of that dumpster and we had probably a million pounds on the ground it got me pretty freaked out 
We got all this shit coming everywhere. But yeah, we're making our way through it. Day four came and by now the need for trash had pretty much reached full on freak out mode. So I started calling anyone, everyone that could come and get trash. We even had to go down to Junk Kings out of Boise just to come out and grab like six loads just to give us some working space. So what had become clear through my understanding is if you're doing your own demo job and it's a lot of stuff and just how much trash and debris, you just need to know how much that's gonna create. They had come out Junk Kings for $700 a load and it gave us a little breathing space, but we had completely filled that space with trees we started taking down with the excavator that we knew were either dead or just in the way. So days five and six, honestly, just blended into one big mess. We had a real windstorm last night and we woke up to this. So we'll work on getting this thing out of here. There it goes, broke it off, perfect. Okay. You're so good, Chris. It left us with a reality that we were just grinding, grinding, and I mean, it was it was a lot. We'd been working 14 hour days. It was totally starting to wear on us, just constant sorting, moving, shoving, pushing things from one pile to another. We had started separating metal and wood so we could try to recycle the wood, and it was just super tedious. All right, guys, it's getting dark, but we're gonna take you on a quick walk of what we're dealing with and where we're at on day six. Okay, so we got all this stuff going on here. A lot of trash. Biggest annoyance is we've had all this equipment, all these places down into nowhere near enough trash capacity because these companies that said they were gonna deliver have not been here. We've probably got 15 dumpsters worth and haven't had, I think we've had three dumpsters so far. You can see all this trash here. I got the skid steer right up on the edge of this creek, trying to bring this stuff out of the creek and into the trash. We ate every day on the run and checked the weather and saw we had another major storm headed to us. We just had that feeling that day seven wasn't gonna be fun. And when I say it wasn't fun, it was the exact opposite of fun. We'll leave that video for part two, but let's just say that the good luck of dodging power lines, having trees fall the right way, it all came to a crashing halt, literally. If you'd like to see that video, hit us up on the subscribe button down here. You'll see what happens when Chris, my excavator guy, almost died in a matter of seconds. And yes, we captured it on video. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit. Watch out, Johnny, Johnny.